Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Tuesday of the fifth week of Easter, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Fallier. Our Alexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 27 through 31. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, grant your people constancy in faith and hope, that we may never doubt the promises of which we have learned from you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. In today's Gospel reading, according to St. John, Jesus' farewell includes a gift of peace that I've been using lately. Mm. Peace, shalom. And when you say shalom, shalom, that's perfect peace. Peace is the normal Jewish greeting and farewell, and Jesus uses it when he appears to his disciples after the resurrection. Originally, it meant soundness of body, but it came to signify perfect happiness and the liberation which the Messiah was expected to bring. This is the very unity which is the aim of Jesus' mission. But it's not the type of peace that the world understands. Peace for Jesus is not simply the absence of violence. It is something much more positive and much deeper. It is a mental, emotional, and a spiritual, especially spiritual, peace. Paradoxically, it can exist side by side with times of great turmoil. It is something internal, not external. It comes from an inner sense of security, of a conviction that God is with us and in us, and that we are in the right place. It's something which not even the threat of death can take away. This type of peace is something that even the going away of Jesus cannot remove. Jesus tells his disciples that if they really loved him, they should be happy that he is going to his Father. It is always a sign of love when our first priority is the well-being of the other person. Jesus says the Father is greater than he in the sense that as father, he has a kind of priority and is the ultimate source of all that is. Though the son does share all with the father and the spirit, in the sense that Jesus is God, but he is also human. And I think Jesus was pointing to that as well. The full divine glory of the son in Jesus is also veiled behind his humanity for the time being as he lived on this earth. 
but after the cross, he will pass into the full glory of the Heavenly Father. And we know after his resurrection, he came back with a glorified body, now fully God. It is obvious that Jesus' place is with the Father. If they love him, Jesus' disciples will know that and, and, and not get in his way. Of course, as Jesus points out, it is also in the disciples' own interest that Jesus go away, for only then will the Holy Spirit come down on all of them. And we witness that in the Acts of the Apostles on Pentecost. So the end is near for Jesus. And what does he say? The prince of this world is at hand. Hmm, the devil. But they are not to worry. The powers of evil are limited in what they can do. In fact, Satan can do nothing except only that which God allows. And God only allows things that will bring about sanctification and holiness within all of us. The, so the powers of evil, they're limited and what they can do, and all that happens to Jesus is simply a manifestation of his great love for his Father and his desire to follow his Father's wishes, to put that enmity to death. Because by undergoing what faces him, Jesus will be communicating to the world the tremendous love of the Father for each one of us. Something that we're called to imitate. And of course, something for all of us to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, reread this scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that the Holy Spirit places in your heart. This can be either through a verse or even just a small word from this scripture passage. Then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you, and more importantly, how you may spiritually grow in imitation of Jesus, fulfilling the will of our Heavenly Father. Let us complete our divine reading now with a closing prayer, and let us pray. Having contemplated your divine word and embraced the sacred truths you teach us, complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in all ways. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click on that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And also click on the notification button, that bell icon, so that you don't miss the new meditations that come to you each and every day. And please help support our channel by sharing these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divino a divine reading of God's sacred word, Pax et Bonum Omnibus. Peace and blessings to all. Shalom, shalom.